What's going on, guys? Uh, pretty rare. It's pretty rare when I get excited about some new logic, um, and it's rare that I actually find some really useful new logic um, that I think is applicable to a wide use case. So this is definitely the case here. I've been spending uh, quite a bit of time trying to perfect this and make it work dynamically. Um, so what we're doing here is trying to figure out cost of goods sold using the FIFO inventory method, which is first in, first out. Now, FIFO is um, demanded if you're doing international financial reporting standards, IFRS. Uh, they require FIFO. Um, if you're doing GAAP uh, in the U.S., you can use FIFO. You can also use average cost. Um, but since IFRS requires it and you can use it with GAAP, um, and it's one of the most annoying and difficult things to actually figure out if you have a lot of different orders and that you're trying to figure out the timing of stuff. Um, it's pretty uh, time consuming to make sure you're tracking everything properly. So I build a nice template here that allows you to simply enter your purchases. I'm going to rename this purchases. Inventory purchases. You enter the... Uh, whatever description for the order. The, the really thing that matters is the number of units you're purchasing and the amount you're purchasing them at. Now you will have to make sure this data is sorted in order from earliest to latest because obviously first in first out. To make this logic work, we have to make the assumption that the earliest purchases are, are higher. And then as you go down, these are, these are more recent purchases. That's the only thing you have to make sure when you're adding data that that is the case. And I just put some random dates here to show you how, you know, obviously older date, newer date. It has to go from oldest to newest, top to bottom. Uh, make sure you're doing that when you're entering your purchases. Then, um, so for FIFO, it means basically the cost of the inventory you're selling is based on when you bought it. Um, so, how do we automate this? Well, I'm going to show you some magic here. So let's say, look at this, sale number one, or these are just descriptions, but look at this, quantity sold 250. What's my cost of goods sold based on the, this being my order history? Well, um, in order to report on the financial statements in accordance with GAAP what my cost was for what I've sold, and I'm using FIFO, I need to figure out, well, when's the earliest purchases I made of the units and what was the price? So here it was $1.50. I bought 2,500 units, so that's going to last through here. So the average cost is just $1.50. Um, and these sales also are listed in order from earliest to, or, or oldest to more recent. Same order as the purchases. Okay, so order one, 250. That's fine. We haven't really breached the, t the first purchase. 550, same deal. Still cost is $1.50. Haven't breached. 300 haven't breached, 65 have, or 25 haven't breached, 65 have not breached. Now, look at this big sale, a $20,000, 20,000 unit sale. Now, I've breached 2,500. Um, so there's some, some of these costs that were 2,500 are um, going to be at $1.50 of this 20,000 unit purchase. Some are going to be $2 because I purchased 5,000 at $2. And that's not going to cover it. So we're going to have to keep going down the line of purchases. And I've made this dynamic so basically it can handle any possible way that you buy things and things are sold. It will work. So um, if you have to, if you've bought a bunch of different uh, units or you've, if you've bought units at a bunch of different prices and you make one big sale, it's going to be able to look at the order in which you bought things and the cost, and it will give you the right co the right cost of goods sold. Um, so this is really really awesome. So here, twenty thousand, we have to go actually all the way through to almost order eight um, to get this. And you can see the average cost is four dollars for this one. We've gone all the way to order eight, twenty thousand units. To average cost eighty thousand. Now, how would you figure this out if you didn't have a, a nice formula? that work that did this well you'd have to say um how many units of this have you used up which would be you know 1190 so you take the difference of 1190 in this and you allocate the rest of that so be what uh, 1190 
12, 22, about 13, 10 or something. 13, 10 at a dollar 50, then 5,000 at two dollars, a thousand at 250, 500 at 75 cents, and then eventually you get to almost 2,000, and you, you use just enough um, to make that cost um, reflect 20,000 units in order of your uh, purchases. How does that work? How am I getting this 80,000? Well, this took me forever to figure out, and I really didn't even think it was possible. Um, I sat here just staring at the screen trying to think of what matrix I could make to make this all automated so that all you're entering is this, and you get a nice cost of goods sold that's dynamic. So first, matrix one. And look at this magic here. What if I highlight the fifth sold group? So the fifth sale, which is one, two, three, four, five, or hold on a second. The sixth. So this is going to be all of these minuses means I have depleted that entire batch that I've ordered at that price. So the six orders depleting all this stuff and we don't have enough inventory. Um, we have to keep going down through the purchases until we f uh, finally reach 20,000. So this is happening on the sixth order. As you can see, that's the big one of 20,000. So matrix one, and what this logic, it's a pretty, it's a really nice formula. What it's doing is figuring out um, for each order. Now these orders are purchases. It's figuring out how much of each sale is depleting that order amount. So like for 2,500, you can see the first couple of purchases, we don't deplete it. So it's going down a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. And then finally when we hit 20,000, it goes negative. And I can reference that and go over here and dynamically figure out, okay, well now what's my next purchase? Well, I did 5,000, but I had 18,690 difference. So I've used 5,000 and I know I can use, um, these references to figure out, well, now I'm still 13,000 short. Then I buy 1,000. Well, now look, I'm still 12,000 short. Buy 500, still 12,000. Buy 1250, still 10,000. 6,000, still 4,000. And you see, see, you can see how that this is working dynamically until we finally get to um, the 20,000. Now look at, this is only figuring out the, the essentially the depletion of each purchase based on the sales but how do i figure out actually what was sold how much was sold um in for each amount and this is where the really cool stuff happens look at this here it is matrix two now what happens if i highlight row nine it's going to equal twenty thousand exactly whatever this equals let's say twenty thousand just to oh that's going to be too much we didn't even buy that many units. Uh, let's do 20, 21,508. I go over to my matrix two. What is it equal? 21,508. And we had to go another level deep. I think it did. Automatically. Let's go. Let's say it was 19,548. 19,548. Go to our matrix. Now what do we got? Highlight it. 19,548. This is so cool, guys. I'm so excited about this. This is really, really nice logic. It's super useful. If you're doing FIFO and you've got to calculate cost of goods sold accurately, this thing will do it for you. All you have to do is put in the, the data uh, entry. Um, and you can see, Astro, we sell at 20,000. Now we're selling... Uh, we did a thousand. You can see how it breaks up 512 at that price. And there's not, pr I didn't reference the prices here, but it's referencing, you know, 512 at a price, 488 at a price. And that's breaking up this next thousand dollar sale based on where we are in order over here. Um, now, what I've done is, is completely scalable. I've done it for 400 batches of purchases. All you have to do if you want to, if you need um, to enter like this data, if you have more than 400 um, orders. Now, likely this is going to be, I mean, their average business probably won't have more than, I don't know, 15 or 20 a year. 
but if you, for whatever reason, have more than 400, all you have to do is um, highlight this, drag it down, click the bottom right here, and just drag this formula over as far as you need it to go. You also want to drag it down as far as you need to go. There's no extra formatting needed to make this work dynamically. All you have to do is just highlight it all, drag it down. Matrix 1, same deal. Um, all this is dynamic. You just, you know, go to the end. Click in cell row 3 because there is a formula here. Go all the way down to the bottom. And just drag it over. Same thing at the bottom here. Go to the bottom and drag it down as far as you need it to go. And it will work. And same here, this you can see it's just going by row, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17, or 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And this you can just keep, all you have to do is drag this down and it will put, pick up on what's happening in the matrices. Um, now you will have to, if you're extending the columns, see how this goes to column OJ, you'll have to adjust that. And this goes to OI because it's offset by 1. So however far you drag matrix one and two over, you have to change the sum product to go all the way over as far as it's going. But that's all you got to do, and it will pick it up. This is just showing you the resulting average price based on all these different things that happen here. It's just taking the, the cost of goods sold, which is a complex calculation divided by the units sold. Um, I also did a monthly cost of goods sold here. This is just to track um, based on our results here and the date of each sale. It tells you what your cost of goods sold was each month and the year to date total. Again, I only did this for a year. If you wanted to do it more, just drag everything over um, and it'll work. Now, I've been very conflicted on how to price this thing because I feel like an accounting manager that's using this is probably going to save themselves. I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 hours a year. I don't know how much time you're going to spend on this doing it manually. It depends on how many purchases and stuff you have to figure out. But let's say it's 50 hours a year, conservative, and you're getting paid, I don't know, $50 an hour or whatever it is. So 50 hours a year, $50 an hour, you're saving 2500 bucks. So what is a fair price to pay for this? And you can obviously use it for more than a year. You could use it forever. Um, so I think the benefit versus the cost, um, I think it's fair to put this one at um, a high, uh, an upper tier price, $125. Uh, another reason for that is the logic and the structuring to figure out how to make this work is probably in the top three most difficult things i've ever done in excel and i've done many hundreds of different things this is up there for difficulty to build on your own um i just had to think completely you know figure out how all this logic would make sense so that you can enter anything here anything here and you will get a proper cost of goods sold uh, no matter what happens so i think that's fair 125 twenty-five dollar one time price um is what i'll list it at and I, I mean this is probably one of the most useful this has got to be uh it's almost essential for anybody any business that has to do fifo inventory this is essential um this will save time all right, so that's all I got for you. If you want to buy it, go to the link in the description box below. Um, I'll list it at smarthelping.com. Here's the website. I did a little bit of revamping here. I'm, I also listed my top 10 template sales by quantity sold uh, lifetime. And I changed some fonts around. But anyway, this will probably be listed under my general business models and tools, I think. I actually, no, I'll probably put it under financial. Um, now, if you did want to put this in a Google Sheets, it'd be easy. You just go to um, your Google Drive and you would just upload and choose the Excel file and nothing in here is happening that could not work in Google Sheets. It might be a little bit big for it. So if you want to cut it down and not have 400 batches, you could do like half and just delete all these extra columns. Um, if it's easier to upload, you can 
uh, do that. Um, I'm also going to list this on eFinancial Models and Eloquence, uh, two of the, the marketplaces that I, I also list my templates at. Um, so that's all I got for you. Super, I'm super excited about this template. Really, I think this will help a lot of people. Um, I didn't know what I was going to build for, for the month of January of 2020, but this was definitely a good one to kick off the year. All right, guys, have a great one. I'll see you on the next one.